It's my honor to welcome you tonight. We're here to witness the marriage covenant that will be established through the vows that Jackson Markham, Alex Dickinson will make to one another. May I pray us uh, started here. Father, marriage is one of your good gifts and we're thankful that you have um, given this to Jackson and Alex. We thank you for this, uh, the day, the loveliness of the venue, friends and family, and that we have the opportunity to uh, stand with them and support them, not just today, but all the days that are coming. Lord, bless this service and uh, all who are a part of it. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> if I may just give a, a word to the parents of the bride and the groom. You've raised your children anticipating this day, knowing that it was coming. And the vows that Jackson and Alex will make to one another in this service make them a family. And as such, Jackson and Alex need your personal and prayerful support of them both. You give them to each other today with your blessing and your care for them both. They need both families' belief in them and love for them and receptivity to them together because marriage is a both-and relationship. What affects the one affects the other. What blesses the one blesses the other. Jackson, do you wish to covenant together with Alex in lifelong marriage? I do. And Alex? Do you wish to covenant together with Jackson in lifelong marriage? I do. And now who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. All right. Thank you. The Bible begins and ends with marriage. And I think that symmetry is purposeful. Because the message of the Bible, the Bible's a big book, but if you blend it down to just one message, it's about the faithfulness of God. Expressed to us ultimately through the person and mission of Jesus Christ, who was and is full of grace and truth. God takes a people to himself, much like a husband takes a wife, and he's faithful to his people. And that's what the Bible is about. And God uses the covenant that you're entering today to convey his faithfulness to his people. We readily think of God as Father, but He also presents Himself as husband. In the book of Isaiah, for instance, your maker is your husband. So the whole point of Scripture is to show us who God has promised to be for us in Jesus, and that in a word is faithful. And so when you make your wedding vows to one another just moments from now, you're pledging your faithfulness. God presents Himself as the husband who loves through everything, because God's love is self-giving. The Old Testament prophets emphasize this each time they called God's people back to faithfulness. But God's love is more than just self-giving. It's also self-sacrificial. Marriage brings both together. Self-giving love, self-sacrificial love. It costs God to be faithful to us, but He pays the cost willingly. Faithfulness is costly. And just like the Old Testament prophets, when you get into the New Testament and the apostles, they also underscore God's faithfulness that He will be everything He's promised to be for us in Jesus. Paul's words to the Ephesians are well known. How Jesus relates to His church through marital faithfulness. Here is that passage from Ephesians 5. Christ loved the church and gave Himself up for her, that He might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the Word, 
so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. And that's really the beauty of the gospel, how Jesus through his gospel beautifies we who take his name. Once when Jesus was challenged concerning the permanence of marriage, he went back to the design intent of God for one man to leave his father and mother, be united to one woman, and the two become one flesh, which is not just about physical union, it's also spiritual, which involves some mystery. But your relationship to one another takes on a complete permanence before God today because of what you do in this service. That's really what one flesh means. It means permanence. And that permanency is why Jesus said, referring to marriage, what God puts together, let no one separate. Because of the importance of marriage, Jackson and Alex and I have been meeting. My wife Lynn joined us once and we've been meeting to prepare, not so much for this day, but all the days following. We've been preparing for marriage, not just wedding. We've talked about the expectations that we bring into marriage. We've talked about the roles that we fill, how to handle conflict, how to cultivate intimacy. We've talked about how forgiveness is maybe even more important than communication. Though communication is important, but forgiveness is essential to a lasting marriage. You can communicate clearly and forgive very poorly. In the language of the older English marriage vows, a bride and groom would repeat to one another the pledge, with my body I thee worship. And that's not meant to make each other your savior, but that the covenant you're entering today with one another is hallowed. Why we call this holy matrimony. But even though marriage is presented to us as something high and holy, if we look to each other to be one another's savior, we're always gonna be disappointed. We can't be each other's savior. And we aren't called to be. What we're called to is faithfulness. And part of that faithfulness is keeping each other mindful of who your true Savior is, the Lord Jesus who loves you. Everybody worships something. You think about it. We all worship something. And whatever you worship is that which has your allegiance and your affections. And that's true for every one of us here because God made us this way. He fitted us with the capacity and desire and even the drive for worship. But God also made us for Himself. And so he's jealous for us with a marital quality jealousy. Inside my own wedding ring is a reference from Song of Solomon, chapter 8. So, uh, Lynn had this etched in my ring. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death, jealousy as fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, the very flame of the Lord. And marriage at its best is an expression of that fire. And at best, marriage is a husband and wife stoking worship of God through Jesus, who demonstrated his love for you both and each and all of us here in substituting himself on a Roman cross in our place because of our sin. And sin is why we have to make wedding vows, which you're about to make. We have to make wedding vows because we're naturally selfish. We're naturally self-beholding. We're naturally self-righteous. We take that capacity and desire for worship that God has fitted us with and we spend it elsewhere. But even though we're that way, and even when we're at our worst, God still loves us and lavishes His grace on those who come to Him through Jesus. Scripture tells us every good gift is ultimately from God. Holy matrimony is one of His best gifts. God formed for Adam, a complementary partner in Eve. Male and female equally bear and reflect God's image, but not as copies of each other, as compliments. Marriage is a one flesh relationship biblically considered. Of no other relationship in your life is this true. Not even your children will be one flesh with you, though they come from you. One flesh is marriage. The Jackson and Alex have brought vows with them to the service. And this is the time in the service where they share these vows to one another. Then we'll go through more traditional marriage vows, then our ring vows, and that's the cadence of our service. So Jackson, we'll start with you. Okay. Alex, for years the idea of bliss has been something that's rippled in my mind as an adult. And like a run-on sentence, I've always been content to let it take me from chapter to chapter with new understandings of what that would mean. But the day we started getting closer and really speaking to each other more deeply, my life went into a new direction completely. This time last spring, the idea of a bliss took this shape that towered over me once the idea of a future and what 
bliss for the rest of my life actually meant now that you were in my life. Alex, I vow today and for the rest of my life to dedicate my mind, body, and heart to you as your faithful husband. I was lucky to have been born at the same time as you, and I vow that for the rest of my life, I will never make you feel less than extraordinary. I know that together we're going to have some ups and downs, but no matter how much we may disagree or even rub each other the wrong way, I will never discard what you mean to me or how you feel. If, if there's a day that your body can't carry on, I promise to bear with you, fill your water, and sit with you until you're well. Um, but even so, I promise that if the idea of peace is far away, I will be your strength. Um, when we became close, uh, we had some pain that only the two of us could really understand at that time. And so I do promise that I will never take your feelings or your pain for granted. I want to be the last person that you kiss, and I, I vow to uh, I vow to make sure to take care of myself and to let my body rest uh, if I ever overdo it and to cook for you every night to make sure that we're both going to uh, eat healthy and be able to live out our days forever and ever. Um, I, also, I also vow to massage you for 10 minutes a night on average for the whole year. Uh, um, being, being able to choose my fate is a blessing and to be with you and to see our past and future I vow to be your faithful husband for as long as I live. We're getting married today. <laughs> Jackson, you are the best person I know. I truly don't think you know how incredible you are or how much goodness there is in you. From acquaintances and friends to dating, engagement, and today, married, you have been the best thing that has ever happened to me. You bring me joy, peace, and clarity. When we started talking more intentionally and then eventually dating, I was terrified to love you. It was both scary and comforting to date someone who was already a part of my community. I knew your character and admired you so much, but I was also so scared of what could go wrong and how it would affect both of our lives if it didn't work out. You eased all of my fears. On the night we started dating, I told you that it was risky. You confidently told me you thought it was worth the risk. I may have liked you first, but you convinced me that we were worth it. Jackson, there are just so many things I love about you. You are introspective, dedicated, thoughtful, and the biggest goofball. I love it when you are so excited that it feels like your smile is about to jump off your face, <laughs> like your face cannot even contain the amount of joy that you have. You have supported me during the busiest season of my life, you have shown me unconditional love as I struggled with seasons of depression. You have held me when I sobbed and truly listened to what I needed. Over and over, I have wondered how I could possibly deserve someone as caring and thoughtful as, as you. So Jackson, today I promise to love and cherish you for the rest of my life. I promise to remind you how wonderful you are when you can't seem to remember, encourage you, forgive you, trust you, and always be faithful to you. I know life won't be easy. We will face hardships and uncertainty, but we get to do it together. We definitely won't always agree on the best solution, and I may do more crowd surveying, surveying than I should. <laughs> but I promise to love you unconditionally, even in moments where we may not like each other very much. I promise to always have lemonade in the fridge, to watch Duke basketball and Tennessee football, <laughs> To let you keep the fan on, to make you laugh every day, and to never stop being curious about your facial expressions. Most of all, I promise to grow with you and love you as we get to do this life together. So according to God's purposes and design for marriage and these declarations you've made, your affirmative answer to the questions of intent asked at the beginning of the service, these vows, personal vows that you've just exchanged with one another. Now, uh, we'll start with you, Jackson. You will uh, repeat these uh, vows after me to your bride. I, Jackson, take you, Alex, to be my wedded wife. I, Jackson, take you, Alex, to be my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. 
for better or worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. And in sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. I pledge you my faithfulness. I pledge you my faithfulness. Now, Alex, these vows, same vows back to Jackson. I, Alex, take you, Jackson, to be my wedded husband. I, Alex, take you, Jackson, to be my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. I pledge you my faithfulness. I pledge you my faithfulness. And now you've brought rings to this service. And these rings that you're going to give to each other now are the tangible symbols of your union and marriage. And the ring serves to remind you as often as you feel it on your finger of this covenant you both entered today with each other before God and with us as witnesses. But the rings, when you think about them, are as much really for others as they are for you because when others see your rings, they see that you belong to another exclusively. And that's an important message. So Jackson, would you place the ring you've brought for Alex on her finger and as you do, please repeat after me to Alex. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my covenant and marriage to you. As a symbol of my marriage and covenant to you. With my life, I honor you. With my life, I honor you. And all my love to you, I give. And all my love to you, I give. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, Alex, the ring that you have for Jackson. And as you place that on his finger, repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my covenant and marriage to you. As a symbol of my covenant and marriage to you. With my life I honor you. With my life I honor you. And all my love to you I give. And all my love to you I give. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So inasmuch as you, Jackson, and you, Alex, have affirmed your vows before God and witnesses, entering this covenant by your testimony and the giving and receiving of rings, I now pronounce you, Jackson and Alex, husband and wife, Jackson, you may kiss your bride. I love you. I love you. Okay, I think we walk out now. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Jackson Mark. <laughs>